this is Xavier with xdtutorials.com and today we're going to be going over part three of the advanced selections. We're going to be going over the tool options dialog tab. Part one we went over the quick masks and basically how to create a very complicated selection in a very easy manner. Part two was going over the drop down menu for the selection features and then this tutorial is going to be going over the tool options tab. Now if you haven't already noticed your tool options changes dependent on whatever tool that you select. You're going to notice if you select the ellipse select tool or the rectangle select tool your options tool options are going to be basically the same exact thing. Now if you don't have your tool options open I would suggest always keeping them open. It's just a very, very helpful thing to always have displayed on your screen. You can just click on the configure this tab uh, button. It looks like a little backwards play symbol. Go down to add tab and then select tool options and just click on that and it, it will come in to view. So the first option you have here is feathered edges and you want to make sure to always click on these options before making your actual selection. Um, if you click on it after the selection it doesn't take place. So I'm going to click on my rectangle select tool, click on feathered edges, I can draw a rectangle here and then if I fill it in with black you're going to notice that the edges are now all feathered. Okay, So I'm just going to undo that. Our next option is rounded corners, and these can be used in conjuncture with each other. So if I have rounded corners and feathered edges select, now if I create a selection, I'm going to have a big rounded corner instead of the rectangle. And if I fill it in with black, you're going to notice it's going to be feathered edges. So all the different tool options you can use together. My next option here is expand from center. This is super, super helpful. You're going to notice if when you're making active selections, the left hand corner is actually at the point of where you first click. What expand from center does is make the center of the active selection wherever you first click. So if I say wanted to just select this tree way off in the distance and I wanted it to be kind of centered in my active selection, I could click in the center of this tree, drag my cursor out, and now you're going to notice I have that tree in the center of my active selection. So that's one of those very, very helpful things that I think a lot of people don't realize. The next option we have fixed. There's a bunch of different ways that you can make fixed selections. So you're going to do aspect ratio, width, height, or size. So if I do aspect ratio, you'll see down here where it says current. If I do 2 colon 1, it's going to mean that my active selection is always going to be two times wider than it is high. You're going to notice no matter where I move my mouse, it's always going to be two times wider than it is high. Now if I reverse that, if I do 1 colon 2, it's going to mean that it's always going to be two times higher than it is wide. Okay, So it goes width colon height. The fixed width in here you can actually type in a width that it's always going to be. So if I say it's always going to be 200 and now I create an active selection, it's going to be 200 pixels because I have pixels selected here. You can change the measurements. But it's always going to be 200 pixels wide. Same thing with height. If I say 100, it's always going to be 100 high. Now the position settings are really nice if you know exactly where you want your active selection to be at. So right here this box, it's not exactly at 400 by 400, but you're going to notice when I create an active selection of a box, I can actually say I want my box size to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels, and I want that upper left hand corner of my box to be at 400 by 400. So. 400 by 400 and that drops it right about on top of this uh, black box here. So if you know your specific dimensions of your box and exactly where you want to put it, you can always just plug it into the position and the size options. Now you may be asking, how do I know where I you know, actually want it? You're going to notice if you position your cursor in your image, if you look at the bottom left hand corner uh, where my mouse is right now, it's saying that I'm at 207 by 246, right where my cursor of my mouse is. So if I type that in, 207 by 246, my active selection, the corner of it, the top left hand corner of it, is right where my mouse was sitting at. So that's one way you can kind of tell in your image where exactly the different coordinates are throughout. 
The highlight option really doesn't do anything for your active selection. If you click it, all it's going to do is highlight um, everything except for what is the active selection. It's kind of anno I think it's kind of annoying because if you say add a selection to it, it only highlights the very last selection that you created. So even though both of these areas are part of my active selection right now, only one of them is getting highlighted. Even if I move to another tool, it doesn't highlight anymore. So I kind of feel that's a worthless option, but figured I'd point it out just in case you like it. Now the guides are sometimes very useful. There's one that's center lines and all the guide is doing is just telling you where are the center lines. It's not actually going to be changing your image or making active selections or anything like that. It's just a guide or just a visual tool for you. So you have center lines, you have rule of thirds, which basically says that um, if, if you're not familiar with the theory, rule of thirds just says that elements at the intersection of the lines or any elements at the at a line itself is basically going to allow the eye to naturally progress to that spot or it's going to be visually pleasing for the eyes so those are your tool options again um feathered edges rounded corners expand from center those about f those three options or so is there are things that i'm constantly kind of using and then from size time to time I find that my size actually knowing my size and plugging it in is very helpful as well so I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you did feel free to subscribe otherwise uh, take a look at you know part one and part two if you ended up missing those um, or you know you can always send me an email at Xavier at XD tutorial and send me your suggestions or your comments or how you're using uh, these different tutorials I always do appreciate uh, learning how you guys are taking these videos and using them in your own projects. so I uh, hope you enjoyed and you have a wonderful day